play an interesting role in Japanese society right now. I think they, they tend to not only be the machines that are used in assembly of cars and other production goods, but they also tend to be helpers in a society, roles that we don't necessarily find in Western cultures a lot. I think that the Japanese attitude towards robots is a little bit broader scope than what Americans tend to see. They encompass both the good and bad in human nature as well, too. Everybody loves a robot in the world, especially for the young children. You know, the adult uh, reaction of adult people to the uh, robots are different, but the young children, the reactions are the same in the world. The uh, humans interested in the humans. So robot is a kind of a mirror to reflect humanity. If a robot has a humanity, of course, you know, we humans love the robots. One of the goal is to create a very human-like robot. However, no, this is not final goal. So my original purpose the, as a researcher is to understand humans, that if we can uh, the, create a very human-like robot, so we can touch to the uh, uh, very fundamental things. The uh, next step is the uh, automated conversational Android. That Android is uh, called Erika. The, our purpose is to install the intention desire to the robots, and then the robot can understand the human's intention desires. Then the robot can be more emotional. For the Erika's system, we use uh, many sensors, cameras, microphones, and then Erika can have a more natural interaction with the visitors. This is the most advanced Android in the world, I think. And the face is, I think, the most beautiful face in the world because you know, I have a design myself. To have the, the feeling that something is alive, has its own life, is, is very, very important for the Japanese people. During the Edo period, there was a, a time when trying to make new inventions was prohibited. But things related to festivals and entertainment were permitted. My name is Anthony Bianchi. I'm a city councilman in Inuyama City, Japan. I'm the first person born in North America to be elected to public office in this country. Our city, Inuyama, is a castle town. It has the oldest original castle in Japan. We have several festivals that are designated national cultural assets. The symbol of our city, Inuyama Castle, is a, is a national treasure. Karukuri is a kind of a doll or a marionette that go on the top of floats during festivals. One is called the Zashiki Karukuri, and it actually serves a function. So they're thought of as the original robots. 400 years ago, a lot of energy went into building these kind of karakuri because they could still use their, their best technology as entertainment for the people. Oh. 
one representative uh, example is the tea serving doll. It actually serves tea made by the tea maker to a guest and returns the uh, empty cup to the tea maker, making it. The mechanics of it are very intricate. The traditional distance between the tea maker and the uh, guest is one tatami mat. So the doll is designed to go forward carrying the cup, and when the, when the guest takes the cup off the, the plate, serves as a switch, so the doll will stop and wait for the guest to finish drinking the tea, and when the cup is replaced, the doll turns around and travels back exactly one tatami mat to the uh, tea maker. It's made of seven different types of wood, and it accounts for the change in seasons, because some woods expand and some contract. 400 years ago, a doll that can serve you tea was at the height of, of technology. In Inuyama, we have Mr. Tamaya Shobe. He's the ninth generation Tamaya Shobe and the only officially recognized Karukuri master in Japan. To become a master karakuri maker, I know that he spent his uh, first five years learning just how to carve the face of the doll. It's a very difficult craft to master. I think Japanese tend to be much more accepting about robots. They don't see them as a force trying to take away jobs or the bad guy. They see it as the helpers of the society and a way of moving forward. In Shinto, everything has a soul. Not only do humans have souls, but animals have souls, trees have souls, rocks have souls. So why not robots? You know, robots are a conglomeration of of metal and steel and circuitry and rubber and plastic. But does that preclude them from having a soul? You know, just because they are an assemblage of these parts, does that mean that they are just property? Or can they become more than that? Can they be considered alive? I think in our lifetime, we're going to probably ask those questions a lot more.